I guess this part of my journey really started um, this last deployment to Afghanistan when I met Andy. We came home and I started coming to church with him, obviously. And at first it was kind of like, yeah, the, you know, everything you, you always hear, like, okay, yeah, the Bible says this, the Bible says, okay, yeah. I don't know how people believe some of this stuff, okay. And then the more that I came and the more that I actually listened and kind of opened myself up, uh, the more it kind of started to make some sense. I, we just started. This is not a good time to do this with being pregnant. <laughs> Andy and I went to, I think, brunch with Bonnie and Carlin, and uh, I was not, a, I wasn't a believer, and I wasn't against Christianity, but I, certainly I, I didn't have it in my head that, eh, that might be something that's for me. So I was like, okay, to each their own, you know, you have your beliefs, I have mine, which was fine for me, but obviously I didn't realize how important it was to Andy, my soon-to-be husband. Um, but we were, we were at brunch, and Bonnie and Carlin both kind of approached the subject of, well, you know, what do you, what do you believe, what are your thoughts, and I was, I was all ready to be very defensive, like, well, you can believe what you want, but I have mine, you know. But they were so gracious, and they were so kind, and they were so, they weren't trying to push anything on me. They simply, they loved their son, and they wanted to know where the woman in his life was, and they wanted, and Bonnie was very, you know, when I told her that, yeah, I'd be willing to learn about it, was very adamant about, I would, I would be very happy to, to help you on your pathway. Anything that you, you know, any questions you have, or if you'd just ever like to sit down and talk, um, just very gracious and full of love, which, not that I'd ever been treated poorly by any Christians. Well, I mean, you know, but it had never been, it had more been a, oh, you don't go to church, well, you're doomed. So this was, it was nice that it was approached with love and graciousness, but not like thrown on me. So that was kind of the first time that I kind of felt, okay, well, I can learn about it at least, you know, if nothing else, it's history, right? Um, so fast forward a little bit to coming to church a little bit more, and Carlin is such an amazing teacher, and he he would teach about things that just, they just made sense. It, it didn't come across as fantasy or, I mean, it just, it's it was truth. And I think um, maybe it was probably about four or five months after starting to come here that I, I started to feel like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. There's something to that. Maybe I should maybe I should read the Bible instead of just listening to what people say on TV or what this blog says or what this person says and why it's so silly, you know. Um, so Carlin had a huge impact uh, as far as his teaching here at Covenant. I think honestly the biggest factor was just the graciousness and the the acceptance that I felt every time I came here. I never felt like I walked in with tattoos so people had stared at me, or, you know, Andy and I did things a little out of order so people shunned me. I never felt that way at all. I never felt anything but accepted by everyone that I came in contact with here. And I think that made probably a huge difference in not turning me off to, to at least opening myself up to the idea. And so I, I think it just kind of snowballed from there. So the more I kind of listened and kind of let it, let the words enter me and um, they started to make a little bit of sense. I thought, hmm, okay, maybe there's something to what all this means. Um, and then through the journey with Andy and having Wyatt, I think the day that it actually like truly hit me that this is not on my own at all is when I have Wyatt. They handed me this little baby that I had no idea what I was doing. And I knew that, one, I couldn't do it on my own. Andy and I couldn't do it on our own. And there's no way we could be the soul makers of this little soul and this little child. So that was the day that I accepted Jesus in my heart. I think that every day I wake up trying to find a way to do things in a way that would please the Father. And that's not, not as a burden, but as a, I know that if, if I can do that, if I can try to strive to please Him, I'm gonna have a fulfilled life, and hopefully the people around me will have a fulfilled life too. To be able, not to say that I'm some great, you know, servant or anything like that, I'm selfish, I'm very selfish, 
but I think in a relationship, especially if I look at like my husband, just trying to put him kind of first because knowing that that's my commitment and that knowing that taking care of him and my son absolutely on a daily basis pleases the father. I mean, that's so fulfilling. Where before, without that, I don't know that I would see my role as a mother and a wife the same. No, growing up, we didn't, we weren't really ch churchgoers. We weren't told we couldn't go to church. If we wanted to go to church with our friends or things like that, we were allowed to. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of education as far as um, the Bible or God or Jesus. Really, I mean, there was just no education. Um, and I didn't know any better to go look for it. Um, and to an extent, I appreciate that because I feel like I was given the opportunity to find my own way, to, to find him and for him to find me, I don't know how that works, but to find it in a way that really, really was, a, was my own path. It wasn't necessarily made for me. I don't know, you know what I mean? Um, so I do really appreciate that. I do wish that I knew then what I knew now. I think it would have changed. It would have changed a lot of decisions. Um, but again, I mean, I'm in such an awesome place now that I certainly wouldn't say uh, God planned all the choices I made, but once I gave him the results, he sure made the best out of it that could have possibly happened. It's like having a whole other family. Um, you know, I hear people talk about, you know, when they move, they have to find a new church and how hard it is. And before, I would have never understood. When you find a church, you go to it. Um, but it truly is a family, and once you, you know, once you're there and you start to know people, you start to make those connections, and that no matter where people come from, no matter where they, where they are in life, where they're going in life, where they came from, you all have that connection of Jesus and that love that transcends all of it. So that's really, really awesome, and that's something that you can't find outside of church. Well, you can find outside of church, but you can't find outside of believers um, to have that one thing that just brings everybody together, no matter who you are or, or where you come from. You know, I guess I would just say, shut everybody else out and listen to him. And the way you do that is listen to your heart because that's how he's gonna speak to you. And it's really hard sometimes to filter out all the other junk in the world that's coming in trying to tell you, no, this isn't right, no, this is silly. But just look at, look at all the beauty around you and all the love in your life and know where that comes from. I think that's what I would say.